Just in my roots to work as hard as I do Been on the money train looking for more better blues Them school days, no class act, I was breaking all the rules Life's a boomerang and I had nothing to lose Another boy in the hood is how it come across I feel like Dr. Doolittle but the money talks They yelling he got game, I'm not the one to ball This just some fresh soul food for every one of y'all Yo, welcome back for another episode of Cornbread Movie Review, man. What up, world? How y'all feeling? Y'all love me still? I love y'all, man. Thank y'all for rocking with me again for another week. I'm never going to leave y'all hanging, man. Just trust, you know, behind the scenes, I'm working on some other things too. So, hey, I'm here to give y'all what y'all need, but just work with me, all right? Hey, hey, we, you, you watch. I, I, I cook up something for you and you help me out too. So be patient, but I appreciate all the love, man. Um. If y'all first time here, man, make sure y'all like and subscribe to the channel. Come on, man. What y'all waiting on? What y'all waiting on? Come on. All right. Thank you for that. Today, we are going to do a movie review. Highly anticipated movie. That movie is Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's out now. It's PG-13. It's in theaters. Um, if this is the first time you here for the channel, understand I knew each movie in five different categories. Acting, cinematography, storytelling, did I get what I bought? Then it's in a must-see. Adds it up, spits out a movie review. And then we're going to rank it through all the movies in 2023. All right? So um, first category is acting. I'm not... Look, it's a trillion characters in Guardian with the Galaxy. So I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I want to talk about some of the unsung characters in this movie who balled out all right so i'm talking about karen gillen yo she plays nebula she's been nebula for plenty of movies now um basically thanos daughter thanos put her in the blender when he was alive man and made her to like a cyborg now but i love her character development it's like you're kind of seeing a different nebula every time she's on the screen where she's becoming more human even though her being a human and a robot or just a different alien wasn't perfect where Thanos wanted to make her perfection, right? Um, so she's ever evolving to how can I use my powers and uh, let's say my flaws and what my dad tried to make me the best, how can I use that for good? So you get to see her character. I'm also going to highlight Bradley Cooper. His face is not, he hasn't been in anywhere in the Marvel Universe, but his voice has. And that, he plays the character of Rocket. Rocket is a huge part of this movie, which we're going to get into a lot of that with the storytelling. But I think he did a great job of capturing the essence of the CGI character, bro. Like, every time Rocket says something, it was impactful. Every time he felt something, you felt it. And Bradley Cooper is a phenomenal actor anyway. So for you to be able to have that talent pass on where I can't even see your face, but yet I can still feel your words is impactful. And then the last character I want to highlight in this acting category is, this character is played by Jakuti Uwuzi. Um, I hope I pronounced your name right, but this is the first time I've seen this, this uh, individual. He plays the high evolutionary um, this dude is psycho, is wild, but a great villain, bro. I, Marvel, you did it again with the with the villains on this. But um, for me, those are three characters that are pivotal in this story, even though they're not the main quote unquote characters. But I wanted to do something a little different today. Now, the chemistry of all Guardians of the Galaxy characters is a one as always. I I don't even I would love to be in the writing room and the, the script readings and just see how they play off of each other. Let's say these people don't get along, they line, they they can fool me. I feel like these characters hang out um as soon as they say, yeah, cut, they hanging out doing stuff together, man. So that chemistry, that love, that camaraderie bleeds over to the big screen. So for me, for acting, I'm gonna say a five out of five, bro. I it was a couple movies that, that have five out of five in acting, and this is one of those top-notch ones for this year. So good job for that. All right, next category, cinematography. So this movie is 
two hours and fifteen minutes, which is always good for Marvel, where they're not they're not cheating you in in screen time, right? They're not just saying, "Hey, I know we got you in the seats just because we're Marvel and we're gonna give you some some BS um, on the screen." So good job with that. Also, with Marvel, certain Marvel movies come big budget. So the budget was two hundred and fifty million, bro. Come on, man. That's they just throwing up 250, 300 million every time with Marvel. So that's good. That type of quality and standard will be there for this movie. Locations. Uh, it's been a couple locations where I think um, I think one location was Orga Corp, Corp or something like that. I don't know. Uh, don't don't kill me in the comments. Um, you know when I'm watching these movies, it's the first time I see it, so I'm writing down notes. And then also Counter Earth, um, which is a different location as well, aka Atlanta, <laughs> aka Atlanta, man. You can't come on, bro. Y'all can't fool us, man. But um, let's talk about some pros from w the cinematography of this movie. Now it was in 3D, so there was a couple scenes that you're like, okay, yeah, that, that's good. And then 3D, there's other ones where. Just because it's 3D, did they make this movie for 3D? Or they stuck 3D on top of it? And I felt like they stuck 3D on top of it. Um, music selection all the time is good. I, I get chills. They're, they be getting me hyped watching these movies. Um, especially with the Beastie Boys. It's good to, to, to have old school rock in, in uh, let's say, hip hop in new movies. So it's good to highlight those, those songs. Vibrant, vibrant colors as always. And even the different looks of different characters. This is kind of where I critiqued Ant-Man and the Wasp for throwing us into that world where people look different. But it's like, okay, how do we get here? Or, or seeing different people or is it normal. But in Guardians of the Galaxy, it is. So that's more of our comfort zone of understand this is a group of bandits coming together. So um, you get the consistency of that visually. And once again, flawless CGI, bro. These fight scenes are great. Um, you feel like you're in outer space or you feel like you're on a rocket ship or you feel like you're on these planets going through uh, stages with these characters. Those are the good things, not the negatives. <clears throat> it felt not creative. We've seen this movie before from Guardians of the Galaxy. Just because you threw money at the budget doesn't mean that creativity comes with that budget, right? So that budget could just mean because all these characters we got to pay for, them, right? That's a whole encompassing um, category is budget. How creative are you with what visually what you want to see? I feel like it didn't do anything for the landscape of filming of saying, oh, that was nice. I like how they did that. Or they changed this. Or that camera angle was different. Or the music, how they played it, they turned it down to certain parts, but turned it up over. I don't feel, I just feel like it was all one note of, I've seen this before. Very standard for me for a Marvel film. Yes, they executed the mission, but for me, over time, if you keep becoming standard, and that is your standard, it becomes the new average. So for me, I'm going to say a four out of five in cinematography, because if you've seen one Guardian Gallery of the Galaxy 1 or 2, the third one visually is almost the same. And you get way more CGI in this because some of the main characters are just all CGI, right? Or even some of the sub characters where you have a lot of the animals or animals. So you get more of the voices, but not really the um, how they have to put on suits and do certain things like that. So for me, cinematography is going to get a four out of five. All right. Now, storytelling. Yo, I want to give a special shout out to my guy, Jason from Ridge Streamcast, man. Shout out to him. He always um, hits me with different nuggets on different movies, uh, different TV shows, stuff like that. We bounce different ideas off of each other. But I want to thank him for um, letting me know, and I'm going to give you all the same nugget as well. I would recommend you watch the uh, Disney Plus show, uh, the Christmas special special with Guardians of the Galaxy. There's a, there's a big twist in information that is it huge in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, but it's good knowledge on how we got there, right? Knowledge is always good. Even if it's bad knowledge, at least at least you know, right? So now that's how you uh, proceed with it. So there was a there would have been a, some 
plot twist or some hole in the story. I'm like, how did we even get here? And y'all know I'm a cookie because I stay fair. But watch the Christmas... I guess Christmas special or Guardians of the Galaxy before you watch Guardians of the Galaxy 3. So that's one thing he advised me to do, and I'm glad he did. So thank you for that. Now let's get into the story. Even before that, bro, Nebula <laughs> Nebula got in there the nanotech Iron Man suit arm, bro. She got all the gadgets, bro. So that's a sidebar, but it's just pretty funny. It just popped in my head again, so it's pretty funny. But the story starts off, bro. Adam Warlock came in cooking. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Bro, this dude came in like Thanos, bro. I wouldn't, I'm eating my pot. Oh, snap. Hold on. What's going He ain't holding no punches, boy. Cooking up everything. But you're like, why is he mad? Like, who is he? What's what's going on with this guy? Why is he doing this? Blah, 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 blah. Right? And later you find out why. But I really like how they set the tone for this movie. Now, did they keep the tone? We're going to get into it. But that's how you set the tone the first 10 minutes of what I'm about to get into. Now, for me, um, this movie is a damn near 100% based on Rocket, bro. His backstory. And they did a magnificent job in telling that. Where you don't feel rushed. You got enough history, but then we get to present. Or we got enough present, let's get a little history, right? <laughs> so great job in that. Even to how he got his name. I don't even think about little things like that where it's like you've been calling people so long, you don't even think about how they get their name and what influenced them. Or when they were kids, how did it work? So you have that aspect of his creation. Then you also have his aspect of storytelling with the creator. What? This dude is obsessed with perfection where I don't know. I didn't get where he, there has to be a perfect society or I've seen it before. So I'm trying to duplicate it or in his head that is doable and I need to make it happen. Right? So I didn't get that little part, but that's not a big deal. It's just something I'm thinking about, but he's trying to create a perfect society and I need certain things here, here, do this certain serums I got to make and create and and certain brains I could take out of this one and certain um, traits or anger or something like that or, or obesity I got to take out of this one and put it all in one and package it up and then spits it out and oh it's perfect now so now, now let me duplicate more of that here in this rocket story bro it, it, hey and I like animals but I'm not an animal I'm not I love animals, but it's like, yeah, they, they, they animals. They're not humans to me. They felt like humans to me in this, in this movie, bro. I, I was very invested in the outcome of these certain characters, new characters with the, I guess a seal or an otter. And then you got the, um, the rabbit, then you got the raccoon and all this other stuff. So you're invested in these PETA. I certain scenes I know Peter gonna be mad, but I for sure know that Peter's gonna be happy um, at the end of the movie. So, I, I I really enjoyed the storytelling for a character that I didn't know needed a backstory, but I'm glad that we got it. Now I'm cornbread. I still got to talk about some pros and cons in this category. Let's start with the pros first. Um, Quill. Let's talk about him. You know, he's a main character in other, you know, in all the other Guardians of the Galaxy, but I don't want to harp too much on him because he's always in, in the, that storyline. So I really like how they kept the same energy with when he left Earth, he was eight years old, right? And does he ever need to go back? Which, you know, I don't know. Does he or does, does he not? But <clears throat> he left when he was eight. <clears throat> so now... When he sees a car, he knows it's a car, but he doesn't know how to drive it. So I'm glad that you just don't be like, no, nah, he knows how to drive a car. It's common sense. It's not because in his brain, it's an eight year old. He still has to learn. So thank you guys for staying consistent with that. I also like the uh, uh, plenty shots that you got at Earth or America or something like that, where it's like, oh, the perfect society. Oh, that nothing could ever go wrong. That that's not uh, that's not us. We are perfect, or we can be perfect. But it's like no, we have major issues that we need to figure out. But we can only figure it out when we come together, not right, not stay divided. So I appreciate those things. Some of the cons from this uh, movie: 
I'm gonna call y'all out, man. I'm gonna give y'all this. This is this is the only freebie I'm gonna give y'all. Marvel, this is the one thing you're getting lazy in. It's time and space. Y'all getting real lazy in this. You got one spaceship here. It opens up a portal. Now you just at the next spot. Like, come on. Bro. <laughs> it ain't no time left. Like, they didn't age. They ain't get tired. They ain't get hungry. Like, y'all just are cheating time and space when time and space was very relevant in the first parts of the Marvel Universe. So, Tighten up a little bit on that. I'm going to ding you really bad in the next Marvel movie if you have to deal with time and space and you don't um, go off of some of the realities of it. So that's one thing. And then something that was a major issue, but the storytelling was so good, I'm not going to hurt you as well, is my man had Rocket created a key and got out. And now this man magically has the same key but yet they lock people with the same lock and he comes to help. Like, come on, bro. Stop the cat. Bro. That's, that's, that's lazy writing right there. Come on, man. Let's, let's be realistic on some things, man. So even though with those mine, uh, uh, they could be major plot holes or, or issues, but the storytelling was so phenomenal. I can't, I, I can't lie, bro. For me, storytelling is going to get a five out of five, bro. I, Y'all got me. Y'all got me, man. I was very invested in and in where we're going with this. Will somebody make it out of a situation? Oh, snap. They didn't. Why didn't they make it out? Um, and even the villains. Y'all do a great job with that. So five out of five for me. All right. Next category. Did I get what I bought? So let's talk about this. So I think the minimum was like $17 because it's a high ticket item. So they're going to surcharge this movie. And like I said, it's in 3D. I'm sure it's in IMAX. So certain times and um, days that you go, it's going to be more, um, the tickets might be more egregious. <clears throat> As I said at the beginning of this re review, this movie is PG-13. So let's get into this. Uh, you want to get into it now? Or let me, before I cook it, let me get into some positive stuff. It is an action um, sci-fi movie. So you get all those things. Uh, watching the trailer, you don't know what's going to happen. You kind of know, but the trailer doesn't tell everything. So that's always good for this category because you get to see the journey and how we get there. So I was very pleasantly pleased, like I just stated in storytelling. <clears throat> Comedy always is, is, is a positive some of the serious situations that it wasn't as much comedy, but it was a lot throughout the movie. So I know I always hurt that. All, I, that always pisses me off where it's always so much comedy, but certain situations, it wasn't comedy. So I, I, I like that. So now let's get into the elephant in the room. What, uh, one of the main issues that I had once again, this movie was PG 13, but it felt like it was rated R bro. And I don't get why, so many curse words needed to be spewed in this movie. I love a good curse word. If you in pain, curse. If you lost, curse. <laughs> Road rage, curse. Like, <laughs> do what you got to do. But don't force the curse words. Make somebody understand why you're saying it. It's just like out of control. You heard, I don't want to get in trouble from YouTube. So you heard the D word. Like, why? Why are we? Come on, man. You heard the SH word a trillion times in this movie. And for the first time ever in a Marvel or Disney movie, you heard an F-bomb. And so you would think something happened where, man, that, that F-bomb is warranted. It's not, bro. It's, if anything, it was used for, like, comedy. Come on, man. There's plenty of comedians out there who don't curse, but still can get the point across. Some comedians feel like when you use curse words, it's kind of cheapening the joke. And for me, I think the first F-bomb should have been major. And this, to me, was not major at all. Why you would use it there. So we got to do a little bit better with that. I know that's a hot topic. Some people might have loved it, but I didn't like it. Or just go all the way, kind of like um, Deadpool. Just make it rated R, like Wolverine. Um, make it rated R where all halls bore. Now I can see everything. Do your thing. But you guys are real teetering on the gray line of PG-13 and rated R. I think we need to stick one way or the other. So for me, did I get what I bought? I'm going to say a four out of five um, because going into the movie, 
<clears throat> I knew some of the curse words were coming, but then when you see the execution, I'm gonna say, no, nah, they, 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 they dropped the ball on that, all right? Last category, is it a must-see? This is a true survival movie. I, he been through some things, boy. You, felt, man, right here. I felt it right there. Um, it's also a love yourself type of movie too. Like you get some some good gems and and uh, what you're looking for. And understand there is no perfection, but there's always ways that you can improve on things. Great. I'm gonna say one and a half villains. It started off with two good villains, and then one kind of went to the other side, and they just lost track of him. Uh, he started off hot, then he started weaving in the back. Like, he he was like a uh, the third story to this great movie, man. So, I'm going to say one and a half great villains. And then understand there's two end credits. I'm always going to try to tell y'all, if y'all watch this before the movie, two end credits. So, stay after and watch that. And then, I am Groot. I love how you finally can understand this man and how they kept the same energy where Gamora is new to the uh, Guardians because, you know, she's the, the, the Gamora from the past where it's like, hey, I am Groot. Everybody understands it but her and she's getting frustrated, not understanding. And at the end, you find all of us together, we get to understand Groot. So I, I really, really, really love that little touch of appreciation for your fans so for me is it a must see i'm gonna say a 4.5 out of 5 overall cornbread movie review guardians of the galaxy 3 receives a 4.5 out of 5 from cornbread check out my 2023 movies come on bro this almost halfway through the year and there's a couple blockbusters coming up too as well so make sure you check out that now, a forgotten segment, man. Um, let's play a guess Guess what movie I'm talking about, right? Guess the movie. Um, I'm going to take you back to 2018. And this movie had the memes buzzing. This is like prime meme time, and this is 2018, and it's a Netflix movie. I'm gonna cheat a little bit, get y'all. I'm giving y'all more hints. Netflix movie 2018, and had the memes buzzing everywhere, man. Can y'all guess what movie that is? I don't know. Don't ask me. Hey, hey, that's enough guess. You gotta take a guess. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that my that today's forgotten movie is Bird Box. Bird Box, bro, had things going on man is these what's the blindfold about what does it mean did they really see the monsters what do the monsters look like um it also has sandra bullock in it she had a outstanding performance as well she was ruthless in this but ruthless to survive so make sure you check out bird box make sure you check out gardens of the galaxy 3 make sure you check out cornbread movie review every week hit that subscribe bu uh, button it's a, it's a bell and turn the notification on all and share it too man we all family man so um that's it for the review thank y'all see y'all again next week peace